Good day everyone and welcome back to this channel. Bisan Unsa Lang Under the Sun. If you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button below if you want to be updated of new videos coming up. In this video, I'm going to share about the subject, content and function of art. It mainly tackles about the following. The difference between the subject and content of art. Representational and non-representational arts. The basic philosophical perspectives on art. The methods of presenting art. And the activity that applies the concepts learned from this video, which you will be doing later on. Let's begin with subject and content of art. There are three basic components of an artwork. First is subject. This is the what of an artwork. A subject could be anything from nature, religion, and many others. Next is content. The why of an artwork. Its message. The artwork could be sending a message of unity, hope, and even disagreement. Lastly, form. The how of an artwork. It's how the artist conveys his message. It could be in the form of a drawing, a painting, a sculpture, or any mediums. Now let us go to the types of subjects. Subjects could be classified under representational art, also called figurative art or objective art. It is a literal representation of the real objects. Example is this four apples painting by the French painter Paul Zizé. Subjects could also be a non-representational art, otherwise known as non-objective art. It does not directly represent a real-life object. Example is this abstract art. A viewer cannot readily tell what is being represented by the painting. Instead, he can form a lot of interpretations out of it. But not all abstract arts are non-representational. Look at the demonstration line above. Abstract is in between representational and non-representational, which means that abstract art can function both. The following are the sources and kinds of subjects of art. Let's begin with nature. It could be mountains, ridges, plains, oceans, bodies of water, and anything part of the natural world or of the environment or of nature. History. It describes the life of people in the past. Myth or legend and all those superpowers. Religion and religious texts. Dream, fantasy, or desire. Humans, animals, and anything under the sun could be sources and subjects of art. What are the contents of art? They are based on different levels of meaning. First is factual meaning. This is the universally accepted meaning. That is part of the real life experience. The factual meaning of a church is that it is a place of worship. Let's go to conventional meaning. It is an accepted and agreed meaning as being taught to us by scholars or by authorities. The church is the temple of God. It is a conventional meaning, accepted this way because we are all taught by the dogma of our church, by the teaching of our church. And we all believe that God's temple is in heaven and that the church is only a representation. Next is subjective meaning. It depends on the one seeing the artwork. In other words, it varies from one person 
to another. Philosophical perspective on art. Walheim considered art as a reflection of human culture and therefore its meaning is somehow culturally influenced. Lee to inferred that art is as good as the reality and the truth itself. Aristotle clarified that an artwork should contain a function where people can perform in order to reach the purpose. Otherwise, the artwork is useless. Italian painter Giorgio Vasari pointed out that a painting is an imitation of the behavior of nature. Your previous activity, Draw Me a Story, is one of that kind, imitating the characteristics of your most memorable place. Leo Tolstoy said that art is a bridge that connects between man's internal and external worlds. It is the reason why the viewers can feel the emotions placed by the artist on his artwork. Leonardo da Vinci made clear that art is part of every branch of science. In doing something, art is what makes it a beautiful, accurate product. Martin Heidegger explained that art could save man from being totally consumed by technology. Pablo Picasso believed that art is significant in revealing the truth. Lastly, Immanuel Kant urged people to understand the purpose of art as a means of improving social relationships. Analyzing all the philosopher's perspective on art. They have one thing in common. They believe that art has a purpose. A purpose that can be attained by availing its function. These are the functions of art. Art's function could be either be motivated or non-motivated. Artwork with motivated function are those that can be used in daily life settings. Aside from the goal of course of the artist, which is a self-expression. Gadgets, malls, glasses, these are tools. Or these are motivated artworks. Artwork with non-motivated function are those that are art for art's sake. It cannot function for everyday activities. These are the specific functions of an artwork. They include personal function as a form of self-expression, entertainment, or these are meant for personal consumption. Social function it involves the interest of the community or society because it invokes social awareness and awakens social responsibility. Physical function. The artwork gives service to people for comfort or for convenience perhaps. Physically, an artwork could be a tool such as a cell phone, toothbrush, and many more. They are tools. Or a container, like a building or a vase and others, where you could place something. Whether functioning as motivated or non-motivated, an artwork can either be a decorative, adds beauty to your house or to yourself as an accessory. Something spiritual related to the practices and beliefs of a certain religion. Educational in nature, such as books, smart board, torch, and other tools for educational advancement. And environmental, the artwork is dedicated to show love and respect for the environment and of course appreciation for the goodness of the environment.
These are the methods of presenting art. Realism. It aims to produce artworks that are objectively real, just like a photograph or a picture. Abstraction. This is a total opposite of realism. Can you identify the subject of the artwork at the right? Perhaps you think it is a ball pen, but no, it's not a ball pen. It's a bird. Yes, it's a bird. Based on the title, Bird in Paradise. These are the different forms of abstraction. First is distortion. It is twisting or altering something out of its true or natural state. Next is elongation. It is stretching or lengthening an object. In the painting at the right, the crucified Christ is elongated. If you see, it is highly extended and it looks like a bird. Mangling. It is done by cutting, lacerating, or tearing an object. Cubism. It uses geometric shapes and figures. Circle, square, triangle, rectangle, and many other geometric shapes and figures. Abstract Expressionism. It aims deep cognitive processes of an artwork in which the elements are used by the artist and applied in all directions. Symbolism A clear example is the flag which represents the country and a symbol of nationalism. Another example is a seal which symbolizes the characteristics and traits of a particular organization. Visa. This method is clearly characterized by extremely bright colors. Take the example, which is Henry Matesis, the cat with red fish painting at the right. Next is Dadaism. It basically produces an artwork that has no definite meaning or no meaning at all. Marcel Dunchamp's fountain is literally an inverted urinal. Ihianan nga gibali. Does it make sense to you? Futurism. The future has a lot of modernity, power, or speed. And that is reflected by the futurists. Take for example Gino Severinus fascinating painting memories of travel which depicts the complexities of a modern city in Italy next is surrealism it is closely related to Dadaism and called super realism there are two types of surrealism first is very sexy realism also known as illusionism. Look at my sight by Salvador Dali at the right. It is a man with a beard like that of a cat. So it's sort of exaggerated, maybe for a particular purpose. The other type is automatism or abstract realism. A good example is Megan Duskinson's The Eternal City. It's of course, if you look at the buildings of the city, they look like giraffes. Surrealistic techniques. So in surrealism, there are different techniques followed. And these are the following. Scale. It is manipulating the relative size of the object, as in the cake on the floor. Look at the picture. Levitation. It makes an object float. See the picture again. Juxtaposition. I repeat, juxtaposition. How do you like seeing the trumpet as the head of the elephant? Are you excited seeing them? This look 
location. The sun is right there beneath the clouds. But in this artwork that they write, it is inside an egg. What a total misplace, isn't it? Transparency. The object is a see-through like that of a glass or a clear plastic, which you can clearly see at the back version. And transformation. This is changing objects in unusual way. Now in this picture you can see the kangaroo with a bead-like skin. It's totally unusual. The last method of presenting art is Impressionism or Optical Realism. It is mainly characterized by optical illusion that gives exciting viewing experience. An example is the painting by The Wave, Italy Dream Lake. Now we are down to our last slide. It is now time for the concepts you learned in this video to be applied in the next activity, which is entitled, What is Art For? A Plastic Art. The goal of this performance task is to manage our house plastics productively. Guidelines are uploaded in our learning management system, or LMS. So, see you there! And once again, thank you for watching the video. Click the subscribe button below if you haven't done subscribing. Let's talk about Bisan Unsalang Under the Sun.